Hello, humans. Maddie, this one is for you. So some dude said this. So Genesis 2-7, I don't know it word for word, but basically what it says is that on the seventh day, God rested. And while he rested, he created man from the dust on the ground. Now, after he created man, man was not yet alive. Man was not alive until God gave him the breath of life. So to God, life does not begin at conception. It begins at the first breath. False. Genesis 1, 24 to 31 clearly states that mankind was created on the sixth day. So not only were you wrong about that, but you contradicted yourself by saying that God rested while God created. No, God created and then God rested from creating. Now Genesis 2, 7 does say, The Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So let's focus on your main argument here. So to God, life does not begin at conception, it begins at the first breath. Wow, uh, do you even research what you say before you say it? And you're not the only person who uses this ignorant argument. Oh, look, there's another one. <laughs> look, I see it a lot. Do you all go to the same atheist website? Not only did I create a seven minute video proving both logically and biologically that life begins at conception, but your argument is completely wrong even according to the Bible. <laughs> who received the breath of life? Adam. Why? Because Adam was formed from dust of the ground, not within a womb. So God gave him breath of life. And if you examine scripture, Adam was a man, not a fetus, not a baby, not a child. However, from Adam and Eve came pregnancy and every human being thereafter came from a womb. And what does God say about babies within the womb? Scripture clearly states that God forms us and knows us even within the womb, even before we are born. Hmm. Adam was the only human being ever brought to life by God's breath of life rather than conception because Adam was the only human, other than Eve, who did not come from a womb. But why did you say the ignorant things that you said anyway? Oh, that's right, because you wanted to refute this young girl. Um, a girl, by the way, who argued correctly, she argued that you either don't understand abortion or you don't understand Christianity. Clearly. You have proved that girl right. One, you don't understand abortion because you don't understand that life begins at conception. Two, you don't understand Christianity. Pretty much everything you said was wrong. And why is that? But the Bible's probably 90% bullshit anyways. Ah, because you don't understand Christianity. Why not? Well, because you don't understand what you read from the Bible. Your argument is that the Bible is 90% wrong, which is... <laughs> That's pretty ironic because you were about 90% wrong in everything you said about the Bible. Nah, the only thing I think you got right was the fact that Adam was formed from the dust of the ground. Ah, and then you veered off course and you argued that America is not a Christian nation so we need to stop trying to create Christian laws. Now, history is quite revealing. In the Mayflower Compact, the pilgrims declared their intention of planting a new colony and advancing the Christian faith. Most of America's founding fathers were active Christians, representing a variety of denominations. Of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence, 24 had received seminary education. Uh, after an intensive study of our nation's religious history, the U.S. Supreme Court declared in 1892 case, this is a Christian nation. The December 27, 1982 edition of Newsweek magazine stated, historians are discovering that the Bible, perhaps even more than the Constitution, is our founding document. And also, do your research on the origin of universities and what Christianity had to do with that. Like it or not, America had been a Christian nation, but are we now a Christian nation? No. Sadly, I would say that we are not. In fact, I would argue that America is almost ripe for judgment. However, abortion is not wrong because it's a Christian argument. As I've proved multiple times over in my other videos, abortion is wrong because it is murder of a weak and innocent human being, and murder is wrong. And a person doesn't even need to consider him or herself a Christian to know that murder is wrong. Life begins at conception. To abort a baby is to terminate the process of life, which already began. To terminate life of a weak and innocent human being is murder. Abortion is murder. Abortion is wrong. Abortion is abhorrent. And like that lovely young girl, Maddie, rightly stated, any Christian who supports abortion either doesn't understand abortion or doesn't understand Christianity. So thank you, Maddie, for speaking truth in a world saturated in sin and layered in lies. May you continue to shine your light into the darkness of this world. Oh, and uh, I friended you. So give me some fin. Noggin. Dude.